What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Vermont Scale Customs. How's everybody doing out there? So I'm on my way back to the deepest part of the mine. Trying to dodge black flies. Some deer flies through here. And I get a flat tire. Lose a wheel. And of course, I don't have a screwdriver. Thankfully, I had my pocket knife on me. But I finally make it back to this part where uh, I've been coming to this place now for like the last three summers and I've never gone to what would be like the furthest, deepest part of this. And it's all the exposed ledge that you see from when you're down inside the mine. So this is basically around the backside of everything at the highest point. And I decide to see how many times I can roll the truck off of this piece of ledge that I see sticking out. And I think what I learned while doing this particular part is um, it was kind of a physics lesson uh, for a couple different reasons. One, about suspension unloading and stuff like that. Uh, but then number two, the big uh, issue with dealing with like heat on rocks, heat and temperature, and then how rubber compounds interact or don't interact with that, or like when, when their traction properties kind of break down a little bit. Um, it was probably 10 a.m., roughly 10.30 a.m. right at this point, and it was uh, pushing at like 95 degrees with maybe 85 to 90% humidity. Um, and I think at one point the tires just, either they heat up and they make contact for a brief moment, but then because of the heat on the rock and stuff like that from absorbing sunlight all so far this morning, um, you know, the surface is actually really warm. So what you don't see is what's happening, you know, at that contact point. So this was one of those things where if I had all the money and the resources and the time and energy to be able to figure out what tires are going to work best in this rock, I'd do it. But um, basically just kind of ran into those those properties of physics here, those those limitations that that you might not necessarily incorporate into your thoughts sometimes or like, why won't this truck do this? Um, so some wheel speed and everything, and I almost throw the thing off the other side. But basically, there's a small little dish of a spot that you see right here, and I, I clearly envisioned a line coming up around to the left of this, which theoretically should have been able to make it, but I think, like I said so far, there's a couple of factors that really kept it from happening. And then once I get up to where I think I could make it, I had the wheels pointed a little too far left and started slipping again. Tried to hold on, and it just couldn't. So I come at this one more time. And you can see as it's coming through here, that's not exactly the steepest part at all, but the tires are just having a heck of a time sticking to this stuff. And these are really soft tires. I mean, for, for what they are, they're, they're no S2 special fancy compound or VX4s or whatever, but um, these really should stick pretty easily to quite a few surfaces, but they just struggled. And you can see here too, they're still trying to burn down to, to something where you can get traction on. And finally it bites a little bit, but then it sets me into this situation where it totally unloads the second it gets up here. So I try and compensate and correct it. Get all four wheels back down. And so once I'm making contact, I try and come back up through the spot again. And I think I tried the wheel speed trick one more time to see if it would push me up onto that little curve coming around. Trying to back out of it and it just goes all wrong. So obviously I placed the truck on the route that I'm pretty sure it would take could take and you can see it still struggles even going up this minimal incline on this surface basically what this is this is old lava that pushed up and met the ice sheets that were here and it dried and froze just like that underneath as it met that surface and then of course it's been worn off by time um, 
it has a fair amount of traction on it, but only if you have the right tire with the right compound in order to really let that hold on. So, like I said, this was a pretty good physics lesson. I've watched this video a bunch of times to see where the failures are happening, and that's really what it comes down to. That's the tire compound versus the surface that it's on. And it never ceases to amaze me how good this truck makes a scene look. <laughs> I really like the looks of this thing. I'm, I'm really happy with how how it just fits in with its surroundings when it's uh, when it's in motion and on video. I'm glad you guys like it too. This seems to be a, a big favorite amongst a lot of you, and so I do appreciate that uh, everyone likes this as much as what I do. This is by far my favorite WPL that I have. It's by far my most, most capable and I, I depend upon it quite a bit for a lot of enjoyment, entertainment, being able to kind of do the things that I think it should do. So we're back on this vertical ledge part here. Things are going okay. It's not quite as steep as what the other, other stuff is. But then it starts to side hill a little bit up here. And you can see it's kind of unloading a little bit on the on the driver's side. I want to point out that there is a spot coming up very quickly where an ant, a fire ant, comes out of nowhere and attacks the rear wheel. You'll see it here in a second. I'll point it out as he's running up to the tire and you can see the point right where he runs up and he bites it and runs away. He's coming up, keep an eye on the left. There's, a, there's something small moving and you'll see it here very shortly. He's coming over, you can barely see it moving. Just here in a second, he's gonna run down that, taps the tire and runs away. That's a little fire ant that got all territorial and realized he was up against something he might not want to tangle with. And, uh, but anyway, he did bite that tire. <laughs> kind of cracked me up. So we're kind of reaching the end of the road on this and still again, surprised it didn't flip off of that while having rolled three different times previously. But the fact that it just even made it to this and was holding on, I kind of wanted to include that in the video. So this right here is the upper, the most upper part of the mine. Everything you've seen me film is all from down below. This is probably pushing on 120 feet deep on, down into this pit. They used to mine pyrite, chalco pyrite, and all the other fancy precious metals from here. They didn't find much of it, but they did find it. And like I said, this is the last of the Stancliffe pit series. I haven't been back there now for two weekends. But you can see the mineralization on the rock. This is, uh, that's exactly why they mined here. But they're filling this place back in, so I'm trying to make the best use of it as possible. Kind of showing you a little bit of the lay of the land. Definitely would not want to lose a truck off of that. You'd never get it back. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.